Hello friends, welcome to my third lecture of engineering mechanics. In this lecture, I will be teaching you how to calculate the resultant of the force system. In my previous lecture, I had shown you how to resolve the vectors into their components, which is maybe uh, with the x component or the y component. In this lecture, I'll be showing you a very basic, a very basic example of how to resolve the forces into their components and also to calculate the resultant. So now you have this force system. You have 25 newton, which is acting with the positive x-axis and making an angle of 20 degree with the positive x-axis. Secondly, you have this force of 40 newton making an angle with the x-axis with the positive x-axis and making an angle of 40 degree with the x-axis. Thirdly, you have the force of 10 newton which is making an angle of 45 degree with the positive y-axis. So, in this case, uh, like I shown you, that force will result into sine theta for the x-axis and in this case it will be resolved into cos theta for the x-axis. So, summation fx and summation of phi, what are they? Summation fx stands for the addition of all the vector components in the x-axis and summation of phi stands for all the addition of the vector components in the y-axis. It stands for summation and you have this diagram, you have the shape of the summation like an E maybe. Okay. Here we go. The first vector is the first force is making an angle of 25 with the positive x axis. So it gets resolved into cos theta and sin theta. Because it is making an angle of 20 degree with the x axis, we write it as 25 cos 20 degree. And because it is moving in the rightward direction, it is positive. It becomes positive. This force it's moving in the rightward direction. And for summation F5, because it is making an angle with the x-axis and not with the y-axis, this force becomes 25 sine 20. Okay. So uh, it is moving in the upward direction, so you have it as positive also. The second force, you have 40 Newton making an angle of 40 degree with the x-axis. So this gets added as 40 cos, because it's making an angle with the x-axis, 40 cos 20 degree. Okay, for the sine, again it is in the upward direction and not in the downward, so again it is positive. So plus 40 sine, uh, I'm sorry, this is not 20, this is supposed to be 40, 40 sine, 40 degree. Thirdly, you have this force, making, making an angle with the positive y-axis. So you have it as, first we'll resolve for this, because it is making an angle with the y-axis, it, it, it is calculated as 10 sine, 45 degree. Now we have to pay attention on the signs because it is making an angle of angle of 45 degree and it is going in the leftward direction. See this force in the leftward direction. So when you have a force which is moving towards the left hand side of the x axis, then you term it as negative. So this force will be negative. Negative 10 sine 45. On the other hand, for the y, you have it as 10 cos 45 degree because it is making an angle of 45 degree with the y axis and because it is moving in the upward direction. So an upward direction is positive. You term it as positive. Now, for calculating these, you have a calculator which is provided to you and you can buy it from Amazon or maybe from any other site which you like. And I would recommend you to buy the Casio 991ES+. 
that is easy to calculate. I will not be calculating it for you because I'm sure all of you know how to calculate or use a calculator. But just in case for this x axis, because I need the resultant, I'll be calculating the summation f of x and summation f of y. I will be writing as it is from my textbook. So now you have this 25 cos 20. You take cos in your calculator. You type in 20 and you press you press the is equal to sign and then you multiply it by 25 and you get 23.49231552. I would recommend you to at least take three digits after the point which is 23.492 because in these calculations as you move on and on and you do not write the decimal point it makes a much larger difference when you finally reach the resultant so you have it as 23.492 then you have 40 cos 40 you again press the on button you type in cos you type in cosine or cos 40 you press the is equal to sign and you multiply by 40 you get the answer 30.6417 because you have it as 7 you take the digit before that as uh, you uh, you add it by 1 so it becomes 30.642 then you have minus 10 cents uh, minus 10 sine of 45 degree you press the on button you type in sine 45 is equal to you multiply by 10 into 10 you get it as minus 7.071 in the end you add all these and you get the answer 47.06 newton because it is a force Similarly, for the y-axis, for summation f y, when you calculate all of these, you get the answer as 41.33 Newton. Now, to calculate the resultant, the formula for resultant is, uh, and it stands for R, it is root of summation fx square plus Summation f y square. Okay, now you have this formula. I'll be continuing how to uh, in the next page, uh, or I'll do it in this page so that you understand it better. You have r. I'll write this r over here. R is equal to you have the summation f of x square, which is uh, forty-seven point zero six square. Plus summation of f of y, which is forty one point three three square, and when you calculate this, you get the resultant as sixty two point six three newton. Sixty two point six three newton. Now, if you want to know the angle which the resultant makes with the uh, with the x and y axis you have to calculate theta to calculate theta you have the formula as theta is equal to tan inverse of summation f of y upon summation f of x now the so it becomes theta is equal to tan inverse of 41.33 upon 47.06 newton and the answer for theta is 41.28 degree now if you want to show your force in the x and y axis you take a force system you draw the x and y axis you take the angle, the angle is supposed to be 41.28 degree, which is somewhere in the first quadrant, uh, maybe at an angle of this, which is 41.28 degree, and you got the resultant as 
3 Newton. And you got the resultant as positive. Because you got the resultant as positive, that means the force lies in the first quadrant and um, the force lies in the first quadrant and it makes an angle with the, uh, it makes a positive angle with the x axis. Now, this is my first example for the force system. In the next lecture, I'll be taking another example of force system. Now, and now, if you like this video, please share, like, and subscribe. And uh, if you have any queries, you can ask me on in the comments below or you can contact me on my email ID. Thank you.